What's this latest bunch of marketing initiatives all about? Because it's uh, somewhat more aggressive than we've ever seen from any enterprise software vendor. Come on. Yeah, well, it's, it's really about op offering customers the opportunity to make the transition to SaaS even more easily than the transition to SaaS typically goes. You know, Our first offer for SAP customers, I thought, uh, was a great one. It basically, just show us what your maintenance is for your SAP contract and we will have NetSuite up and running and licensed for half of the maintenance. Forget all the other costs that go along with it, the people and the resources to manage it. And quite frankly, in most cases, that would be a price increase for NetSuite because people are paying exorbitant amounts of, of money for, for maintenance. Um, when you tack on the, the latest program we put out there specifically for R3 customers, you know, those customers have to move anyway. They either have to move to a, a new, again, on-premise version of SAP, be it 6.0 or, or 4.7, um, and that's as hard as moving to NetSuite. So they might as well look at moving to NetSuite, moving to a modern cloud-based architecture, uh, if the pain is going to be comparable, but the price will be much less. So that's really what it's about, is to begin to, to get those customers to think about you know, the, the opportunities outside of a traditional on-premise uh, offering in the world and the age of the cloud. Okay, just to be clear on the pricing side, are you talking about the license cost, or are you talking about the the total implementation cost? Or Talk about the total implementation cost. Right. We, and, and so basically, show us your maintenance, and we will get you up and running, including license, for half that. And and that would include uh, data management and... Any data, data migration. Yeah. There's probably some amount of data that, that we'd bring over, and there's probably some limits on the amount of data the customer would want to bring over anyway. Right. We want to bring over clean data and all those sorts of things anyway. And what about uh, process uh, compromises? Because presumably there's going to be some... Uh, uh, com uh, compromises that customers are going to have to make along the way. Yeah? Well, I, th I think they're going to find a system that's far more flexible. I don't think that the system it will be for them. I think they're going to find a better system at the end of the day in NetSuite just because of the flexibility uh, of the of the offering. Right. Hey, at the end of the day, if NetSuite can't solve the business problem that SAP is solving, I tell them not to move. But if we can solve the business problem, what they're going to do is find a much more flexible system for business process management than they have today. And what about specific industries? Are there any that you're targeting as a uh, as a starting point, or is it an across-the-board thing? Well, it's, it's an across-the-board thing. We do better in some industries than other. You know, wholesalers and distributors are a very good industry for us. Services-based companies are also a very good uh, industry for us, as well as technology companies. So mm. uh, those are sort of our natural verticals, and I imagine those would be the simplest for us to attack. Okay, fair enough. And in general, as far as um, this whole sort of uh, competitive landscape is looking at the moment, I mean, you said today that... Uh, um, and Robin Bloor said today that it's it's basically over for the on-prem guys. Um, that's obviously a marketing position, but is that something that you're generally s seeing in an accelerated sales situation or, or what? Well, I think what we've seen, especially is the, the, the economic down, downturn has actually accelerated, I think, customers move to software as a service mm. um, because of the economics of the, of the opportunity. If you had to move right now, you would want to move to something that had a lower upfront cash outlay and, and less risk. And so I actually think that that's accelerated the move uh, to the cloud far more so than anything that, that we've done. And once that migration has started, once that bull rush starts, even when things turn around, it's going to be an irreversible, irreversible trend. I also thought Robin's, the math, just the mathematics of Robin's argument are almost uh, unassailable. Mm. You know, we will always be able to deliver this at a far lower cost than a customer managing it themselves will be able to do. Mm. What kind of objections are you seeing in the marketplace when, as you go around? Because on face value, it would seem that the offering is pretty compelling. And speaking to people here, they, they seem to be pretty wowed by it. But what sort of objections do you come across on a day-to-day basis? Well, you don't really see the objections about concern about putting their, their data in the cloud. And some of that may be self-selecting. Customers that come to NetSuite know that's the only way we offer our products. So they, they're, they're already excited about that opportunity. So maybe elsewhere it exists and we don't see it. You know, the biggest loss reason we have in our pipeline is to no decision. So I think it's companies see the opportunity, they see the power of migrating off multiple siloed systems into a single system, but they're just not yet ready to make that move. So actually, it, oftentimes what you see in our pipeline is a deal will close in three months or it will close in one year. And those one year, you know, the deals that take a year to close are those people that wait until the time is right for them to make this migration from multiple systems to one system. Okay. So, uh, so I think that's, that continues to be the big, the big barrier is no decision. Okay. And what about the next big thing for, for NetSuite? What's the, 
what's the thing that we should really be thinking about and looking forward to? Well, the, the, the next big thing, uh, I'll give you a little preface of it, and that's the second version of what we call NetSuite SRP, Services Resource Planning, effectively building an application designed to completely automate the services delivery process, very similar to what SAP did and, and did very well for manufacturers with MRP. NetSuite's going to do that for a company that delivers services as their primary business. We've already introduced NetSuite uh, SRP version 1.0 last fall, and so we're going to have some very big announcements around that, uh, around that coming up. Brilliant. Thanks very much indeed, then. Thank, Thank you. Yes.